So let's try to solve the absolute value inequality. Absolute value of minus 2x minus 1 must be greater than 3. So we solve inequalities by solving the corresponding equality. Absolute value minus 2x minus 1 equal to 3. So remember the absolute value equation becomes two equations. Minus 2x minus 1 equals 3 and minus 2x minus 1 equals negative 3. So we'll solve minus 2x minus 1 equals 3 first. We'll isolate our x terms by adding 1 to both sides. That gives us minus 2x equals 4. And since the left-hand side is the product, minus 2 times x, we can solve for x by dividing by the coefficient, minus 2, and simplifying the algebra, the factors of minus 2 can be removed, and 4 divided by minus 2 is minus 2. And that gives us our first solution, x equals negative 2. The second equation we can solve in the same way. Minus 2x minus 1 equals negative 3. We have a subtraction over on the left-hand side, so we can add plus 1 to get rid of the subtraction. Once again, we have a product over on the left-hand side, minus 2 times x. So to get rid of a product, we'll divide. And we get our solution, x equals 1, which tells us the critical values are x equals minus 2 and x equals 1. Now, if we want to find the solution set, we can begin by graphing the critical values. Now, since the critical values solve the equality minus 2x minus 1 equal to 3, but our inequality is strictly greater than, the critical values are not included in the solution set. So we'll use open circles for them. So the critical values partition the number line into three intervals. And now we'll pick a point in each interval and see if the points in the interval satisfy the inequality. So in this interval on the left, we might let x equal minus 1 million. Remember, it's easier to go big. And it's useful to think about these in terms of our signs and our magnitude. So the components of our absolute value expression, minus 2x, since x is negative and large, then minus 2x will be still large, but because we're multiplying two negative numbers, we'll get a positive number. If we then subtract 1 from a large and positive number, we get a number that is still large and still positive. And when we take the absolute value, it's still large and still positive. And now the question you got to ask yourself is, is a large positive number greater than 3? And the answer is yes. So x equals minus 1 million should be included in the solution set. And we want to include the interval that it's part of. So we'll shade this left-hand interval. How about this central interval? Well, unfortunately, we can't pick numbers that are large because they're way off to the right or way off to the left. But there is a convenient number right here in the middle of the interval, x equals 0. So let's actually substitute x equals 0 into our inequality and see if it's true. So first, we'll let x equals 0. We'll substitute that into our absolute value inequality. We'll do some arithmetic. Minus 2 times 0 minus 1 is. The absolute value of negative 1 is. And the question we have to ask ourselves is, is 1 greater than 3? And even though some people may think that 1 is bigger than 3, this is in fact false. And so we should exclude this central interval. And finally, we have this interval off to the right. So let x be 1 billion. 
And so remember, x is a large positive number. And let's go through the different components of our inequality. So minus 2x, that's minus 2 times a large positive number. And so that's going to give us a number that is large and negative. Minus 2x minus 1. Well, I'm going to subtract 1 from a large negative number, and I get a large negative number. But then I take the absolute value, and I get a large positive number. And again, the question you got to ask yourself is, is a large positive number going to be greater than 3? And we won't listen to this critter. We'll say that, yes, a large positive number is greater than 3. And so that means that x equals 1 billion should be in our solution set. And so we should include the interval that contains x equals 1 billion. Now, once we have the interval, we can write our answer in interval notation. So this left interval goes from the way, 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 way left. Well, we call that minus infinity and all the way up until we hit negative two and we don't include it. So remember, infinity is never included in our interval. It always gets a parenthesis. Negative two, because it has an open circle, shouldn't be included either. And so we'll close parenthesis there. And this describes our left interval minus infinity up to negative two. We don't include the center portion, but we do want to include this right-hand interval, which starts at 1 and goes to the way, 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 way right, which we call infinity. And again, infinity always gets a parenthesis. 1 is not included in our interval, so 1 also gets a parenthesis. Since our domain includes things that are in the one or in the other, we'll union these two intervals. And to avoid confusion, we'll say that x is an element of the union of these two intervals.